Morning guys, we're back out here again. Uh, Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. Yeah, um, and the things that we're doing right now are not things that, uh, it's not the glitter and glory of doing construction. Uh, there's lots of things that uh, when you see construction going up like the framing we've done, everybody's like, wow, look at the progress you're making. <laughs> now well, it looks slowed down. Well, we're coming to a point where it's like, wow, are you really doing anything? But there's so many things that code says has to be done. And Danny just does a lot of little extras on top of that, a lot of extra bracing and stuff. And you don't notice that in the overall I guess lay of the building. When yeah. you're seeing walls and ceilings go up, it looks good. But when you see a board laid on top of a board for bracing, you don't notice that. Yeah, and it's just like like these are the these are the hurricane raptor clips that we have to use here. Now these, let me get on the camera where you can see them. These are called RT7s. Uh, this is what they require here. R8s. You can use eights, uh, but the RT7s is what our local people carry here, and what we require to use. Well, yesterday I came in and I framed up the rest of the gable uh, walls. I framed up uh, where the two roofs meet up here behind me at. I got all that framed in. The back wall. Uh, the back gable wall. We decided to put a window in the very back gable mm -hmm. so that we would have light in the attic um, if there's no power. And plus, if we ever needed ventilation, we could open it up, keep it from getting too hot up there. Plus, if he wanted to put a chair in. If I wanted to put a chair and overlook the back hunt. property back yonder, and deer were coming out in the pasture one evening, I wanted to take one. It's a great place for me to sit with a window up, and they never know I'm even around, and I'm comfortable. So, and we will be putting down a pull-down uh, stairwell in here. Yeah. I have one that I took out of a gentleman's house about 10 years ago. No, it's, uh, yeah, about, yeah, 10. about 10 years ago. Uh, nothing wrong with it. He was just an elderly gentleman and he said he'd been in his house for years and he felt like it needed to be changed. And I, I tried to talk him out of it, but he said, no, I want a new one. And I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with the old one. It hardly ever got used. He gave it to me. I installed him a new one. I brought it home. It's been in my barn for 10 years sitting in a box out here and we're going to use it in here. Uh, so that, you know, I just don't throw nothing away. Um, especially if it's good. And, and now I'm able to use it and save myself. We're using a lot of things. Every nail that he's used in those nail guns, he's had for 10 plus years. Yeah. So those nails don't go bad, guys. Yeah, nails don't go bad. And the thing about it is, I used to buy nails by the pallets when I built houses. And so we have plenty I have that need using. bunches of nails in the barn. As a matter of fact, I have a ton of nails out there that don't fit my gun. They're wire clip nails that don't run in this gun. And uh, maybe some of y'all might need to purchase some from me at a real good discount. I don't know. He wants uh, to clean the barn. I got to clean the barn out. I don't know how many I've got, but I know I've got a bunch of eights and I know I got a bunch of twelves. So um, let us know. Let us know if you're close by and you think that you could use them. I think they're 33 degree wire fed uh, wire nails. I'm not sure. All right. What's the project for today, past? Uh, Past this today is going to be if I if my arm holds out <laughs> hammering my arms are tired from holding that gun up uh, I might start the strong back down through uh, this side of the the building over here to my right um, and start lining the rafters up and pulling strings on them and getting them all where they're not sagged or you know make sure it's all on layout and everything before it comes time to put the lathing up. And see, that's another thing that, just looking at this building, you'll never see that. Oh, to be in the attic. Or you won't see what he's doing as far as that. I, I can show you the process, but aligning these, you can look at them now and you can look at them later. Unless you're a carpenter, you don't know what he just did. You can't mm -hmm. tell he did anything. Yeah, some of them's only, you know, some of them may have a half-inch bow in them or a quarter-inch bow in them and stuff like that. And to me, I and, see no bow in them. And... When you go to putting up plywood or something on the ceilings or sheetrock or whatever you decide to put up, that half inch bow will throw you off on layout. And, and it'll look like this when you got nails going down. Yeah, so <laughs> the purpose of the strong back is to make the ceiling joists as rigid and to help line, I'll put my knee wall up under it and it'll help line up the rafters on the top so when I get up there to put my lathing on, they'll all be cut to length and have layouts put on them. And I'll be able to just lay them in place. I don't have to worry about bowing my rafters around because they're already lined up where they're at. And 
it makes things a lot simpler when you get up there, you know. So it's going to work out pretty good. It's just, it's just getting it all done. There's a lot of work that goes into the framework of something before you actually close it in. You busy, Papa. So it's time for me to go back to driving nails. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, on the up here, my my raptor clips are going to my hurricane clips, whatever you want to call them. Some of them are on the ceiling joists, and some of them are on the rafters. Technically, these are supposed to go on the outside of the building. When you have an overhang, they hook to the rafter on the outside of the building. But because I don't have an overhang on the outside of the building, I'm putting them on the inside, which is a little aggravating. But, I mean, when I get ready to put my finished wall up in here, I'm going to have to watch for those metal hangers up in there. And that's something that I really don't like, like I mentioned when I did the beams up here. But because I don't have an overhang, I'm not worried about wind getting up under an overhang and jerking the roof up. So some of mine's going to have them on the ceiling joists, and some of them will have them on the rafters, just sporadically around through it. There's some places, like right up in here, I can't get on the rafter to put a nail in there. So I have to put it on the ceiling joist. And the ceiling joist has been nailed to the rafter, and there is a band on the outside that's also nailed to the ceiling joist and the rafter. So I've never had an issue with that. Um, now this one over here is nailed on the rafter right straight across from it. And that one is nailed on the ceiling joist. Here we are back. We done lost count days. This is day 10. Nine, 10. That's day 10. Um, we're, like we said in the beginning, we're just going through putting the hurricane hangers on, clips and stuff like that, strapping and stuff. That, that's just as important as doing anything else. You know, so. He finally finished the last one, just finished it. I I'm actually, well, I'm actually going to go back on this side over here because the, the worst of the hurricanes come from this direction that's facing, like I'm facing the camera, it's coming from that direction facing me, and the wind can get up under here. So I feel like I have some extra clips. I think I'm gonna go back and put them on both sides over there, <laughs> just as a precaution. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can have too much precaution, to be honest, you know, and... Told you. That's just who I am, yeah. Well, today I've got um, macadamia nut to Chino. I'm trying to wean myself off coffee somewhat. I still have my coffee every morning and I might have a cup in the afternoon but lots of times I have to Chino and coffee in the afternoons and late evenings is always to Chino. Mornings is usually to Chino and macadamia nut was my choice today. I've got a cheese danish that I bought in town. Just so you know. Oh yeah. And Danny's got... I got fresh apples that's been cut up and sweet potatoes. And water. And water. I have a bland diet. <laughs> so, I've been inside uh, working on making videos for crazy days, and then I've got to edit. And so, when he needs me, I'll run out here and help him some. But Wanda's got to play catch up with social media. A couple of things in here I still got left to do. I mean, I got to put some dead wood everywhere, and I'll probably, I don't know if I'll get to that today or not. You got to break the porch time. I, I do have to break to shoot porch time today. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, so let's get busy, Papa. So I got a lot to do, and it's supposed to be raining here in just a little while. So I'm kind of like holding off to maybe it rains, and I'll go do porch time during the rain. But we'll just have to see how it goes. You know? It's bright and sunny right now, and I yeah. don't see no rain. I don't see any rain, but they swear it's going to happen, so... Off here I gotta hold a gun and a board. Okay, I'm not sure about this. Because I still gotta be up. You got plenty of ladder. Just going up the ladder. No, I can't. I can't hold on and hold on to that too. You got, you're right there at it now. Yeah, but I'm afraid I'll fall back. It's freaking me out. I'll hold on to the rafter with one hand. Wrap around the top of it. You're right handed, so. Maybe I'm scared to death now. Uh, I can't Put get your hand up on it and grab onto it. There you go. I'll take it for just a minute. You can get it up there. I can't get it up there. 
Mine ain't nowhere close. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Can't. Get a hold. Let me change hands or something. Got it? Mm -hmm. I can't do this. It's not up. I gotta get right there at the end, so let me up. I got it. You just really don't wait nothing. I can't. I can't do that. Panic attack was kicking in. All right, guys, this is what we've been up here building. This is called a knee wall. It actually sets up under the studs. You can see here where we popped a chalk line. Right there, all the way down through here. We plumbed up from one end of the building to the other end, and we popped a chalk line. And you can look and see this wall down through there. Just as straight as it can be. This wall serves a couple of purposes. It sits on top of a strong back. This right here is called a strong back. We have a 2x6 laid down flat ways. 
we got one standing up edgeways down through here that is so many inches and so many feet from the outside edge of the building into it this is straight down through the building the knee wall actually sits on top of the strong back because the strong keeps it from sagging it helps to stiffen up these uh, ceiling joists is going across here. These are long span, like 15 feet, two by sixes. And by nailing them into this strong back right here, it helps to stiffen them up. It holds everything in line. So that we get ready to put the ceiling up from underneath. All the boards is in line. When we come up here and we get ready to put our lathing on top up here, all these are in line. So nothing's crooked anymore. And everything's pulled into, uh, to, into level. And let me see if I can get up here and show you. This is the top of the roof. You know, if I come down here, you can see everything planes out across yonder, really smooth. And you can see the differences in the pitches up here, how they, how it lines up from up top up here. This is just a bird's eye view from up on top of the building. Now, next thing is to move over to this laminated beam right here. We're going to put a wall down the top of this beam up to these ceiling joists, I mean to rafters, to uh, hold them in line as well as up where they don't have any sags in them. They'll all be level and smooth like these over here are. So that's our next uh, project to get done.